Obtaining a 12 lead EKG, accurate lead placement is critical. The limb leads should be placed on the arms and legs. They should never be placed on the chest wall. The arm leads should be placed no higher than the tops of the arms or the upper biceps. The leg leads should never be placed higher than the hips. If you put them higher than the hips, then you can get respiratory variation, which causes artifact as well as having an altered look to your EKG. The precordial or chest leads should be placed on the chest wall. Please note that the leads are on the rib cage. None of the leads are on the abdomen. To place the precordial leads, we first place V1 and V2. We need to count down to the fourth intercostal space just to the left and right of the sternum. Remember that it is the center of the lead that will carry the signal, not the edge of the lead. So when we place V1 and V2 at the fourth intercostal space on the right and left sternal border, we are placing the center of the lead on the right and left sternal border, not the edge of the lead. The next lead we place is V4. Skip V3 for the moment. V4 needs to be placed at the midclavicular line about an inch below V2. Place V3 in a diagonal line between V2 and V4. Remember to look at the center of the lead versus the edge of the lead for more accurate lead placement. V6 is the next lead that is placed. Skip V5 for a moment. V6 should be placed on the far left side of the patient at the same level as V4 and at the mid-axillary line. Many people are surprised with how far to the side V6 is placed. Lead V6 is looking at the left side of the heart, so make sure it is placed correctly. V5 is finally placed. It is at the same level as V4 and V6, and it is equidistant between the two other leads. Poor lead placement is one of the fastest ways to get a cardiologist to sneer at your 12 lead EKG and no one wants to feel foolish. Remember, if you take the time to obtain the 12 lead, you should take the time to make sure it is correct. Your patient must be lying at a less than a 20 degree angle. Look at your patient carts and know ahead of time what a 20 degree angle looks like. If the patient is sitting upright, the EKG will not look right. The baseline will not be smooth. Body hair and motion are the two main reasons for artifact. Shaving a tiny area on your patient's chest in order to get a good EKG shouldn't take a lot of time and is worth the great 12 lead that you'll get afterward. That's probably what it is, if the blood pressure and all that is connected, then that's probably We do cardiac is. monitoring here, so pretty much any patient who's in a hospital and on a heart monitor, we watch their heart in real time, 24-7, and then we're constantly in contact with our nurses and CNAs and physicians, and letting them know everything about the patient, whether it be the heart rate, or arrhythmias, or dysrhythmias, or anything. We're able to remotely monitor multiple hospitals. In standardizing our processes, we've been able to increase the number of people we monitor. So that's hundreds of patients a day, uh, millions of hours a year. And we've really been able to not only become experts on the subject matter of EKG interpretation, but also experts on the technology, experts on alarm algorithms, and experts in communication with how we communicate with nurses and doctors every day. And having the telemetry monitoring, it's someone watching my patients for me 24-7 all the time. If I step away, you know, off to another patient's room, they're still watching that patient so I know they're in good hands. 
Well, the great thing is they don't have to worry about their patient's heart rhythms and staring at the screens and going through the patient history uh, on the cardiac monitoring all day long because we do that for them. If anything happens, we let them know immediately and we're also able to document so that the doctors have all the information they need right away. Hey, I was calling about your patient in room 305. There. Lots of times when we call the nurses and the doctors about things, they're not aware of the cardiac event that a patient just had or the, the heart rate that the patient has and the, the critical situation that's going on. And they know because we call them. I'll go check on them and see what's going on in the cardiac monitor. Thank you. It's both of us working for the patient's you know, better outcome. The benefit for the patient is that they will get better care. Their nurses and their physicians have more information about their hospital stay and what their heart is doing during the hospital stay. And with that information, they can be treated more efficiently and get better sooner.